Hi guys, this is Aaron Runk. Uh, in my last video, we went over how to indicate a drill and made our one inch hole in this material that we have right up here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over how to dial in our boring tool, okay, our boring bar without using the tool eye. So, cause every shop in America has a tool eye that hasn't been hit or broken. We're gonna go ahead and just cover this so that way you'll know how to do it. So the first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to find a sleeve that will fit my boring bar. So once I do that, I can go ahead and start the process. This is actually a pretty quick process once you've already drilled with your insert drill because you're already pretty close to where you need to be. So very important thing to remember is I have these set screw holes right here that are actually going to come down onto this area right here. Now I'm missing mine right here because I've been using the ones on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I have a flat on both sides. I'm going to simply rotate down, okay, to where it goes in there. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and put my sleeve in there. And thing that's very important when you're using your boring bar is I want to do all my cutting. Let's kind of move this out of the way real quick. I want to do all my cutting on this top edge right here. It's very important. So what that means is whenever I start making my shifts, I'll be going in the X positive direction to make my hole bigger. So with that being said, I need to make sure, just like on the insert drill, that the furthest cutting edge, in this case, I only have one cutting edge, is pointing towards the center of my turret, okay? Towards the center of my turret, so that the outside, the outermost side of my cutting tool is cutting on the top or outside of my bar, okay? Or my material. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that in there the correct way. And one thing you also wanna make sure whenever you have long boring bars, is we'll go ahead and look here in the back, is you don't want that boring bar to come out too far because if it does, if it comes out too far, you'll end up hitting the back side of your turret back down here, which is never good. So what'll happen is it'll come through as it's moving and it will hit right here and it will, it'll mess up your turret, break your tool. It's just not a good day for anybody. Okay, so back over on this side right here, we'll kind of get you a good view and we're gonna come in and we're actually gonna make a cut on this part. So. Once I get it in there, again, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten underneath here on my set screws. So I'm gonna get my tool, and I'm gonna come up underneath it, and I'm gonna tighten this in, and I'll kinda of show you guys what it looks like as I bring it in there. Make sure this my sleeve's all good, there we go. Kinda of messing with it, kinda of turned it. Okay, there we go. So I'll go ahead and get this turned in. And once I get tight, I wanna make sure I'm on the flat. So how do I verify that I'm on the flat once I get there is I'll actually wiggle my boring bar. So I should be getting pretty close. It has to go pretty far, so there we go. So if you'll notice, I'm wiggling my boring bar back and forth, but it's not turning because the set screw is actually putting pressure on here. So it's actually not allowing it to wiggle. So that's good. That means I can go ahead and tighten it up. So that way I'm not on this round side, which once it starts getting tool pressure, it will allow it to spin. So that's the proper way to load in our boring bar. So I'll go ahead and tighten that in there and I'll get it pretty tight. Okay, now normally whenever you do this, I have another set screw right here. We'll see how much trouble this gives us. If it gives us too much trouble, we'll go ahead and skip it. But usually, when you're manufacturing, you want to have as many set screws as you can on the boring bars that you're using because you need that rigidity whenever you're cutting. So it's going in pretty good. We'll go ahead and send it the rest of the way. Once we get it all tight, there it is, nice and tight. Very good. So we got a lot of rigidity on this boring bar now. I have two set screws on this bottom side that are holding it, so that is very rigid now be careful when you're messing with this because it is sharp so i've got a half inch boring bar right here and my hole from our last video we ended up at one inch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this one inch fifty thousandths once i do that i know i'm going to be good that way i can tell the machine kind of where my uh my bar's at and i'll tell you why in just a second so what i want to do is i want to go ahead and turn on my spindle 
So I'm in handle, and if I haven't called up a spindle speed already, I would have to, but in this case, I can just turn it back on because I still had it in 14% on my spindle speed. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come in, I'm just going to take a real light pass on it. So I'm going to reduce my increments, I'm going to come up, and I'm going to come in until I start cutting it. Okay, so I'll come in and then I'm going to come up. Okay, you can actually see that I'm cutting it. So what I'll do is I'll change to my Z-axis and I'll come in and I'm actually going to make a pass on here so that way I can see a full cleanup. Okay, there we go. Just enough to get that full cleanup. And notice I'm not going to move my part back and forth in X. I'm only going to move it back in Z. That way I can see exactly where I'm at. Okay, so I'm going to stop my spindle. And we're just going to use our calipers for reference. Okay, so right now my hole is one inch ten thousandths. Now I said we were going to make that one inch fifty thousandths. So I was kind of worried about the cleanup. So I know that my hole is one inch ten thousandths big. That's important because that's going to be how much we're going to shift it down to put this tool on center. So in my programming, if I tell the machine to go to one inch ten thousandths, that's exactly where it's going to go is right there. So that's great. So one inch and ten thousandths is what we need. So what we'll do is we'll kind of move over here to our screen. And what we're going to do is show you guys where to put this in at. So I've called up my offsets and make sure when you have your offsets that you're in your geometry offset, not the wear. Okay. And you also want to make sure you're on the correct tool. So our turret has tool 11 called up. If you need to, you can see turret 11, tool 11, or turret is on tool 11. Sorry about that. Next thing we're going to go on here, make sure we have 11 called up and we're going to do this on the X axis. So our current position that needs to go right here is 14 inches, 800 and four thousandths. So I need to put that in there. So negative 14 inches, 800 and four thousandths. Okay, so I've put that number in there so you can see it. Now, remember that one inch, 10 thousandths. We're gonna have to minus one inch, 10 thousandths from that, because remember, I'm cutting on that outside part of the part on that hole, so I need to come back down towards center. So I'm gonna come back up to my number and I'm gonna go minus the full diameter, one inch, 10 thousandths, see that down there? And I'm not going to hit input. Do not hit input over here on the side or if you have an input down right here because you want to plus input. So when I hit plus input, that puts me at 15 inches, 814 thousandths. So that means if I was to send the machine to Z0, that would put me right at the center of where I need to be. And that's all you need to do to dial in a boring bar so like again, my name is Aaron Runk. I hope this video is beneficial for you.